What if we predict the future again? Welcome back, imaginary friends, to another predictions video. If you watched our last one, you will see that we try to predict the uh, premiere, premiere appearance, the future of Generation Nine, at least just existing. And we were only a few weeks ahead of the actual official announcement for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. So I really chalked that up to being a lucky guess, even though we had a lot of data to prove it. It was just too close. I didn't like that window. So we're gonna try again, but this time, we're gonna be a lot more detailed. We're gonna try to predict the different archetypes that exist from generation to generation. I'm talking about the Pikachu archetype where there's you know these different type of electric rodents that we see. We got the you know the first bird family that we come through, whether it's like Pidgey or Starly, it's it's these families that we see in every generation. And I think we can do a pretty good job, at least I hope so, because that would make this video even better if we got some right. We can do a good job predicting generation nine. Archetypes. 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 Let's start our predictions where every Pokemon adventure starts, and that's with the starters. Now we have the three base starters announced. We've got our little grass cat, we got a little fire pepper, crocodile, whatever you want to think it is. And then we got Donald Duck, but we want to see where they can go. We'll just start with the grass. Brigatito, I think, was based on the European wildcat pictured here. Very cute, very dangerous. Do not pet, do not approach if you find one in the wild. PSA, probably don't touch any of the animals I'm going to mention, even though some of them are dead. But yes, I think Sprigatito was based upon the European Wildcat, and where we see it going from there is evolving into the European Lynx, Iberian Lynx. But its final form, I think, is going to take place in the form of the Sabertooth Tiger, the Sabertooth Cat. They were known for European ancestry, and I think that many people, this is not a Jared prediction, I think this is a popular internet prediction, that this is where this line is going to go. We obviously know it starts out as grass, and here's where I'm going to insert two theories. I wonder, partly, if Pokemon Legends Arceus gave us a hint to the final typing of all three legend, there you know, of all three starter Pokemon's final evolutions. I really wonder if this cat's gonna turn into a grass fighting type. Kind of spoils the next two. The crocodile will turn into a fire ghost type. And then lastly, the water duck, uh, that he would turn into a water dart type. I think that's one theory that uh, I kind of like because we can kind of see where it's going and I'll explain more with the next two in a minute. Uh, but if that's the case, then we could see Sprigatito's final evolution being a grass fighting type. But I want to say an alternate theory would be either I mean, a grass fairy. I really don't want that to be the case. I feel like that's just an easy punch in the nose, albeit we've seen fairy type used before in the Alola region. So there's really just two generations ago, but how many generations have we had fire and fighting? So for Foy Coco, which is probably the funnest one to say out loud, I think it's going to go the way of the, now excuse my pronunciation for this, I have it written down and I'm going to try my best. Diplocynodon, let me just say it like this, it's an extinct alligator. Uh, it used to be in the region of Spain. I found this very interesting that when I was researching this, I actually found someone else, an actual paleontologist in Spain, who also had this idea. So I was like, this is crazy, and actually paleontologist had this idea, so I'm gonna go with it. Now, with that being said, while I wanna point out and say alligator and not crocodile, and, well, we remember the whole thing about the fire stars being based on the Chinese Zodiac or the Lunar New Year Zodiac, whatever you want to call it. We thought when we saw this crocodile ghost pepper Pokemon come out, oh no, it's broken that pattern. Someone pointed out to me that a male alligator is called a bull, which would mean this could take the ox place on that circle of 12 animals which would be a really cool twist, but at the same time, really off from anything else they've done. I also have a possible theory for it being a snake type, which would be the fulfillment of another slot in the Chinese Zodiac. That said, why it would become a snake? Well, save that for the legendary Pokemon section of this video because the animal creature thing that they used, or at least I've seen be used to explain how this could fulfill the snake line well, we'll talk about that creature a little later on. As for its typing, like I said already, it could be fire ghost. That could be simple. That could be right there, especially since some people point out it looks like a ghost chili, although cocoa in the name could also insinuate like maybe a cocoa bean. So if this turns into a fiery pot of Mexican coffee, which I know it's in Spain, but you know, we have the Mexican chocolate, which has spices in it. And this is cocoa, which is the chocolate. 
and, and coffee and a ghost pepper and a crocodile or alligator. It's a really open-ended goal. So I see it could be either the fire ghost or what would be the most remarkable thing I think they could do is go ahead and pull the trigger and make it a fire dragon type. Now with having a grass fairy type that would create kind of a neutral balance between those two, then we might not want to see, but why not? Go ahead and get a dragon type to a starter Pokemon. And lastly for our starters is Quaxly. Now Quaxly, uh, immediately some people want to point out, oh, it's going to be a pirate. It's going to be a dark water type or uh, maybe a fighting water type. And those are very good. Those are very, very good points. I don't want it to see, I don't want to see a water steel type, which some have suggested. I don't want that. I want Empoleon to exist on that island of water steel. It is an, a, a, just a beautiful type. I just want Empoleon by itself. I love Empoleon and I want it to be by itself. I want to see it. Now this is personal. This is very personal. I would love for them to go the way of the albatross, not in the cultural normative way, but turning this little blue-footed booby duck into an albatross that has something to do with the rocks. Because there are a species of albatrosses that migrate to and from Portugal, which is in the Iberian Peninsula, that make their nest on cliffs, like very steep rocks. And having this being a water rock type, I don't know, something fascinates me about that. I'd like to see that as a starter. It'd be like Omanyte, but better because it's a starter. I don't know what that would look like in the outcome. Maybe it was a shipwrecked pirate. I don't know. We'll go with it, but that's what I want. I want water rock. I expect water dark or water fighting, to be honest. Just not water steel. All right, our next set is gonna be some of these early Pokemon that we find that are two stage families. I'm talking Pokemon like Puccina uh, and, and Mightyena. I'm talking about like Nickit and Thievel. Uh, and as saying these, you can already tell that I'm gonna start with the two stage dark type that we kind of see in some of these generations. For this, I would love to see the Western European Hedgehog. Yeah, uh, get a dark type two stage evolution. You can have this little baby, little bit of tiny hedgehog that involves to this big massive bulked out dark fighting if you want to. I would like to see the hedgehog get some love. I know we've had some hedgehog-esque Pokemon before. Cyndaquil is kind of touted as being, or at least his family's kind of touted, like Quill Lava, you know, Quill's right there. It's a, it's a porcupine, but it's also a mouse because it's got to be the rat or the you know, Chinese Zodiac. Anyway, I want to see a better representation of the porcupine. The next one I want to look at is the fish uh, two stage. We have Magikarp in uh, generation one. We have Phoebus and Melodic. We have Whelmer. Uh, we have these examples of these two stage fish Pokemon. And here I want to see the sturgeon. I want to see the sturgeon of the sea, uh, the Mediterranean sea. Well, I say this, get the sturgeon in there because I don't know how they would do this. But in researching a lot of this, apparently orcas live around Portugal and Spain. And I would be thrilled, thrilled for an orca Pokemon. Just a killer whale Pokemon just out there captivating the seas and keeping them under lock and chain. I wouldn't want it to see it be a water dark type because we have that with Sharpedo. If anything, make it a water fairy type because orcas are shark hunters and well, the water was a neutral damage thing, but then the fairy could help attack all the dark and there you go. Just make it, give Sharpedo a predator. But for this video, I'm gonna say the sturgeon because I have no better reason. And lastly, for the two stages that I want to at least predict is the rodent or rat-based Pokemon that we see, whether it's Rattata before we see Bidoof, uh, you know, all hell Bidoof, and then Swobert in the last generation. And for this, I look to the European Meek, just the normal type two-stage uh, rodent Pokemon. Uh, I think the European Meek could easily be it. There's actually a lot of rodents in um, Southwest Europe, North Northwest Africa, because the Iberian Peninsula has such a relationship with Northwest Africa as well. Uh, there's a lot of rodents out there that you could easily just slot in this. I picked the meat because why not? It could be a fan favorite possibly. It could be one you could shill out money for on special events and whatnot. So I think European meat has a good strong suiting for this. We'll see if this comes to pass. Like I said, there's plenty, plenty of rodents that could take this spot. And I actually had a harder time picking a rodent for the Pikachu spot that we'll talk about later on as well. Next up is the animal based section. And this was one of the funnest and hardest sections to complete because there's a lot of animal based Pokemon archetypes that we see uh, across the generations. We have the bug type, we have the bird type, we have cats, dogs, bears, pigs, snakes. Oh my, I really missed that opportunity to lions, tigers, and bears, but we really don't see a lot of those. We see cat in general, sometimes it's a lion. I'm looking at Pyroar here. So let's start with the bug type. This was actually the last one 
one I had filled in. It took the longest and oh my word though, it was worth it. I want to present to you the, I'm gonna butcher this because I took Spanish with a very strict teacher and it was just survival and I didn't really learn it. So here we go. I'm gonna pronounce some Spanish words in three, two, one. Caballucos del Diablo. Uh, what is that you ask? It means like literally little horses of the devil. And you're saying, well, wait a minute, didn't you just say this is gonna be the bug type? I know I did. So what this is, the Caballucos, Caballucos del Diablo, it was the spirits of the dead who came back at a special time of the year in the form of these multiple colored horses, but they had damselfly wings or dragonfly wings. And the image here, it just it showcases like how big they could be, but I've also seen image work of them being really small. And I just thought this dragon horse fly thing that had some nefarious motive behind it could make for a great three-stage bug Pokemon, especially a bug dart Pokemon. That's something we haven't seen yet. And there's several of these uh, dual types that we've not seen. And this is how I wanted to work in a final appearance of a bug dart type. I, I don't want to picture a horsey with just Butterfree wings, but I guess that's where I start in my head. And then it goes into like Mudsdale with Gigantamax Butterfree Wings, I don't know. Next is gonna be our bird set, our bird trio. Uh, we've seen these in a lot of different fashions. It really got really repetitive at first. You saw, you know, Pidgey and his family or its family. Uh, you've seen Starly and its family. And it's just bird, 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 bird. Talonflame was a nice break. It at least went Firebird. For this set, I wanted to look at the Iberian Magpie and the Golden Eagle. And unfortunately, I'm just gonna make it a normal flying type. Um, I can see this transition between the two being very beautiful. I wanna make the Golden Eagle something special too. Uh, I think it's a majestic animal. We've seen generations take transformations before with Picapex line. Uh, you know, it started as a woodpecker and it turned into a toucan. So why not take this beautiful magpie and turn it into this even more beautiful golden eagle? Um, I couldn't really find a secondary type that would fit it other than normal. I didn't want to do normal, I mean, flying fairy. I feel like we got enough flying fairy po 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 We have enough flying fairy Pokemon and this didn't really scream fairy to me. I didn't want to do dark flying. We have the Honchkrow family, so there's that. I didn't want to return to it. Okay, now it's a snake set. I didn't really know how to take this tactfully because we've seen Ekans before and Survivor. Ekans evolved once, Survivor was a standalone, and then there was Snivy, which was a starter Pokemon, but we've, I, I just wanted to put this snake, and I want to take this snake and turn it into Pokemon. Bear with me. It is the Asp Viper, uh, and I want to make it a poison dark type because it's dangerous, it's poisonous, it lives in that region, and it's close enough to Africa. It may be a long time before we see a Pokemon generation in Africa, but I want to see a Pharaoh Snake. I, I don't know how you make that work, you may have to make it poison ground because sand, but man, that'd be cool. Now, if we went to Africa and pulled some of their resources, I would want the Sidewinder to be turned into a snake. I think it's a very underrated snake in the world of snake ranking. Well, that's a whole different video. And I'm not gonna rank snakes for a video. That would be horrifying to watch and play back. No one would watch that video. Do an Ekans Arbok regional variant where Arbok is a pharaoh. Bada bing. There we go. That's better than anything I have written down on this paper, I promise you. Okay, next is the cat set. Now we're talking Meowth, we're talking Skitty, we're talking Glam Meow, we're talking about these classic Pokemon because we have two stage cat Pokemon that we see in every generation. Meowth is like half of them and I don't want to give Meowth another chance to have a regional variant. He's done. They're done. They're on the shelf. For this cat Pokemon though, I'm going with a common Ginnet, not your average cat. I want to see this get the line of day because uh, one, it's just it's just spunky looking. I like the spunk this guy has. It's mainly two colors, but there's a lot of variation. And I think you could create almost a spin -a type of variant for this. You could have like a bunch of different just patterns that you could have. You could have a stripe pattern, you could have a spotted pattern. But yes, this would just be your normal two-stage cat Pokemon and nothing much more special than that. Now this is the dog set. Now I'm talking about like the Arcanine, I'm talking about Houndor and Houndoom. For this, it, it, it's this is the easiest, the easiest shout to make. It's the Iberian Wolf. This has to be a Pokemon. The Iberian Wolf has to be a Pokemon. And for its typing though, morbid, but ghost type. Why is it a ghost type? Because they're highly endangered. Not the most positive way of getting here, but we've seen a lot of dark things in Pokemon before. Just make this a pure ghost type, two-stage wolf-based Pokemon. 
I want this Pokemon as my starter. Forget the cat, forget the alligator, forget the duck. I want the ghost dog. Okay, the last two sets that we have in our animal-based category is first of all, bear and then pig. Bear first. I'm talking Teddy Ursher. I'm talking Stuffle. I'm talking about Panchamp. We look to the Canterburyan brown bear, and I would want this to be a grass rock type. Not a highly common uh, dual type. I would like to see that get some more love. We got some bear love in uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus with uh, Teddy Ursuline. We've already seen Hisuian forms in the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailer with uh, Hisuian Zorark. Uh, so it's very possible to see some other Hisuian Pokemon show up. I don't really want that. They're gonna have to explain why the Pokemon from the past are there, and, and they can, but I wanna see this bear. I wanna see a grass rock bear. And I know Trey wants to see a grass rock bear. Isn't that right, Trey? Oh yeah. That, that one's even lower than the dogs on my list. But the last is the pick set. Now I feel like this one's gonna be very easy. I'm looking at Spoink, Swinub, and Tepic. I know Tepic is a starter, but we've already used Snivy as a starter to justify our snake Pokemon. This is my list, make your own. Spoink, Swinub, Tepic. I wanna see this Iberian black pig, I think is what it's called. Um, this Iberian pig, and I want it to be pure flying type. Not normal flying, we've got the birds. I want this to be a pure flying type. Why? Because when pigs fly, right? But then two, I need it to be super effective against grass types. We'll get to that later on. But a two-stage Iberian pig, just this little bitty cute black pig that turns into this big flying honker of a pig. Just like, imagine a blimp. I know we have drift blimp, but no, because it was a hot air balloon. Pig blimp though, or something, I don't know. Maybe a fighter jet, I, I don't care. Give me flying pigs. I, I need pure flying type pigs. So let's just move on to the next set. And this is going to be the type based set. We've talked about animal based. We've talked about, you know, there are common two stagers. Well, these are gonna be the several reoccurring type trios or duets that we see amongst every generation. We're gonna start uh, with the fighting set. Uh, now, this is probably the easiest one to try to say, let's see this because it's based on the Iberian Peninsula. It's based on Spain, <sighs> bullfighters. I mean, we could have the easiest trio of bullfighters. It may be a little tacky if they actually pull this off. I don't know. I'm looking at Throw and Sock from uh, previous generations. You can maybe just do a duet instead of a trio. You don't have to go full machop, machoke, machamp. I think that may be a very sensitive subject because I know there's some sections of our society that shun the sport of bullfighting. Some are very pro, some are very anti. We're not here to pick a side. We're just here to say, Pokemon could do a bullfighting trio or bullfighting duet for their fighting type archetype, Pokemon family in generation nine. For our psychic family that we will see in generation nine in whatever this region will be called, uh, I wanna look at this old tale, the rooster or Barcelos. Uh, at least I hope that's how it's pronounced. Please forgive me, I don't know Spanish. The Rooster of Barcelos is a old folktale of a man being justified of his innocence because a rooster, he said, would crow when he was hung. He said, if I'm innocent, which he was being accused of stealing, and he was gonna be hung, he said, when I'm hung, if this, if this rooster crows, I'm innocent. And sure enough, when he was hung, the rooster crowed, he was innocent. And so we can see a psychic rooster uh, just just think, think about that. There would be a lot of fun to have with this psychic rooster. Just say psychic rooster one more time in your mind, psychic rooster. Yes, that sounds amazing. You could even make it psychic fairy because it's a positive thing. You can make it psychic flying, even though I don't want to go Zatu on us. A rooster that can read your mind, tell you if you're innocent or not, uh, that's so much less scary than Alakazam. That's so much less scary than Hypno. There's, there's so many terrifying psychic Pokemon. Next is the grass set. Now, I'm talking Oddish, I'm talking Bellsprout, I'm talking Hoppet, Lotad, Dot, more on Dot later. I'm looking at this, looking at the region, I wanted to do something a little bit more colorful because I went with the red carnation and the pomegranate flower. Now, the pomegranate flower, if I'm not mistaken, is like the national flower of Spain. Nonetheless, these are two very prominent flowers in the Spanish region, the Spanish culture. And to see a red carnation Pokemon that can blossom and bloom and become this or pomegranate flower, you could do, uh, you know, it has fruit on it. Uh, I'm thinking Tropius, but with pomegranates, so bananas. I don't want to see another grass flying type, a la Tropius. I think Tropius is just a magnificent standalone creature. 
that should never be replicated, duplicated, or regional formed. This Pokemon would have all of these reds, all of this beautiful color, and then we've already seen in the game trailer, there's a lot of color integrated into this game. I mean, even the names are Scarlet and Violet. Maybe you could have two different ones. I think this would be a really cool way to integrate something that's very popular and very well known in the Spanish culture and the Iberian culture into this game. Looking at the rock and ground type sets, I didn't want to really try to divide the two. So uh, looking at it, it's very easy for me to just go, well, let's look at Geodude, he's a rock type, or their rock type, Rock and Rolla, Rolla Coley, all these rock type Pokemon. And the easiest one for me to pick was the Ibex. I feel like this is another one that's very high up on the possibility chart. Uh, seeing an Ibex Pokemon, pure rock type, golly, that would just be the easiest home run for Pokemon to make in this case. It's, it's almost too simple to pass up. It's too easy to pass up because Ibex are huge. They live in that area. They're, they're majestic. I mean, just look at this thing. That's awesome. The last set of types that I want to look at is either Ghost or Fairy. Uh, we already have the Ghost Dogs that I really want. So I really want to lean too heavy on those, but for this, I, I want to combine it. I want to take Ghost and fairy put them together make a ghost fairy because that's fun why not and looking at this uh, i took inspiration from ghastly and litwick and these families and looking at the culture in the region i found this little devious goblin called the Trasku. i think this is great i think this is a very fun way of incorporating ghost and fairy making it uh, relevant making it fun making it entertaining because this thing is it, the, way the description i was given it, it's like a garden gnome so we have like this little red riding hood gnome and you could say, well, it was part ghost because we put gnomes out in culture uh, to ward away things, to ward away maybe the evil spirits that would come. And that's why we could also say fairy because while fairy in our world has a really dark past, uh, fairy in the Pokemon universe has really light and presence. And so we have this ghost fairy. It could be like this little ghost that haunts a goblin or a gnome, a garden gnome with this little red hat or cape, and it helps protect the houses of the owners from evil. I think this is another easy home run for Pokemon to do. I don't know if they will do it. Uh, it may be too human-esque, but we've seen some very humanoid Pokemon before. Let's hope this is for the best. I wanna see this Trasgu. Uh, I wanna see this little garden gnome haunted by the ghost fairy spirit of someone that wants to protect the family and just ward away evil spirits. So for our third to last set it is one of the most hyped up sections. It is some of the most anticipated ones because we know they're gonna happen. We know we're gonna get the fossil Pokemon. We know we're gonna get the electric rhodic Pokemon. And we know we're gonna get a pseudo legendary family or a dragon family. Cause sometimes they're one, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're both. And so for this, I wanna look first at the fossil Pokemon. And I wanna diverge from the commonality of what we've seen in Pokemon before. We've seen dinosaurs, we've seen, uh, you know, living fossils. I mean, we've seen Lelip, which is one of my favorite Pokemon to be honest, Kabuto and Kabatops. So we see these different types of species and but if you notice they're really really leaning into the fact they were fossils they are rock types and so i want to go in a slightly fuzzier direction i say this because the two pokemon that i found or at least the two species that i want to see become the fossil pokemon for this is the bear with me because i'm going to read languages that aren't my natural tongue the neurologus neurologus aka the king rabbit it's a big old chunky 25 pound rabbit. It's just a big old boy and it's extinct. So we can make it a fossil Pokemon. And then the other one, which is to me, maybe the, the best uh, of the two would be the, oh goodness, Agriarctos, the dirt bear, the ancestor to the panda. This would be fantastic. And for their types, I'm not going just plain rock. What I want to see is a normal rock a type that has not been used, and a ghost rock, a type that has not been used. And we just take these two because normal and ghost would, you know, they don't affect each other. So they're rock and rock, normal and ghost, they, 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 they're they very equal and they're very fuzzy. I know I already have one bear, I just realized, in this series that is part rock, so, Nah. Next is the electric rodent section of the storyline. And now we talking Pikachu, we talking Pichu, we talking Plusel and Minim. We're talking all the rest of them up to the present generation where we got more Peko and it's two forms. It's so weird. Now in doing this, this is why I said this was hard earlier. The first four, throw Pachirisu in this collection here. They were all just electric Pokemon. Electric, electric, electric. But then the last four generations, we've had electric 
something else. We look at these, we've got Emolga, Electric Flying. We've got the Dene, Electric Fairy. We've got Electric Steel and Tachidemaru. I hope I said that right, moving forward. And we have Electric Dark and Morpeko. So where do we go from here? Now I want you to notice all of these other ones. You know, we've got Flying, Fairy, Steel, Dark. So this is like not using the base front of fire, water, and grass, but this is using, you know, these lighter and sometimes added typings. And so it was really confusing. Do I stick with the first four that were just pure electric or do I stick with the second four, which were dual type with electric and something else? Do I divert from their common patterns? And yes, I chose to divert from the common patterns. So I'm going with just the electric fire red squirrel. Red squirrel is huge in Europe, they're everywhere, but this little bugger is red, so I wanna make it a fire type. I don't think this type's been used before outside of Rotom's shifted form with the stove, which I love Rotom, I do, but that's a form type, not, not a standard type. And so we get to this, the pseudo legendary slash dragon type family, and this was very hard because there's either dragon type myths that have already been used, there's either dragon type Pokemon that we've already seen, or there's just not a lot of dragons. And looking through the depths of the culture that I studied for this, I found this, this beautiful, beautiful creature. It's called the Iberian Emerald Lizard. You even got some variants between the male and female that you could work out in, in, in how you evolve these. To see this Pokemon come to reality based off of this actual living, what looks like a Pokemon, the blue head, the green body, the dark feet, uh, I think this is gonna make a great water dragon pseudo legendary pokemon family we've not really seen water dragon outside of palkia we just got the origin form palkia which is putting more hype around this water dragon but i feel like we can still use this type and use it well with this beautiful green and blue lizard all right as we get down to our last two sections i've really wrestled with how i want to present these do i want to talk about the regional variants first and the new possible evolutions that we could see or do I want to talk about the mythical and legendary Pokemon that could possibly end this generation? And I feel like it's only appropriate to save the legendary Pokemon from last. So let's look at the regional Pokemon that we might see in this unnamed region and some possible new evolutions that we could see. And while there are so many that I could predict, uh, I've already seen, like I said, one possible leak that says maybe 26 new variants and or evolutions. I don't want to hold on to that and I don't want to also create 26 regional variants slash new evolutions. So I've just picked a couple for each. Let's talk about evolutions. For one, let's get it out the way. Let's look at Eevee. Can we, will we see new evolutions? It's been since still beyond since we've seen an evolution and I feel like they should and that they could and that they might, but I don't think that they will. I, I'm really hoping that generation 10, which is, you know, five years from now, could really cement some more evolutions, if not this generation that we're about to get. And, and maybe they'll do both. Maybe we'll see evolutions in both. But for this evolution, what I would propose is you finish a trio around Sylveon. If we look at the rest of the evolutions, you know, we got the original three, they're a trio. They, they counter, well, they don't fully counter each other because Fire's not strong against Electric, Flareon doesn't have no type advantage over Jolteon, but we have these just base types that are so prominent uh, that they've been throughout. And then we get Umbreon and Espeon, they're a duo. Then one's weak to the other. Glaceon and Leafeon, one's weak to the other. And then we just get Sylveon all by itself on an island. It has some unique properties to it, but I think it's time to expand that. And let's go with a steel type evolution and a fighting type evolution. Now we've already mentioned bullfighters and I don't want to get too heavy handed in the culture again. Um, but with the steel, there is a lot of industry that's coming up new. There's a, uh, we've already seen in the game, we've already seen these windmills uh, in our uh, preview trailer. So there's industry, industry. There's industry here, there's, there's, there's room for this steel type to be present here. And then fighting would complete this trio. You know, fighting is weak to fairy, which is weak to steel, which is weak to fighting. It would just be the perfect way to add two new evolutions, give us what we want and, and make them fit. Because just like with Umbreon and Espeon, just like with Leafeon and Glaceon, you would have these two who one was weak to the other, but they would partner right well with Sylveon right there at the end. So that's my pitch for two new evolutions. My hope is maybe at 50% on seeing these, uh, seeing a new evolution period. I would take just one. I know I'm asking a lot for two, but I would take at least just one new evolution. If they want to give us a poison type to counter Sylveon, if they want to give us the steel type to counter Sylveon, if they want to give us a fighting type to make Sylveon stronger, 
uh, which I don't think it needs to be, but they could. And I, I would just ask for at least just one. If you want to wait and do a trio in, in generation 10, wait, but just, just give us one. Moving ahead though, another new evolution that I would like to see, and this is based on a story called The Miracle of the Roses. And I've got some data over here uh, of the Elizabeth of Portugal or uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth of Aragon, who if I'm not mistaken was a queen. Uh, yeah, it was a queen consort of Portugal. In her time there, there was this story that's passed down and she was actually made a saint in the Catholic Church because of this. Uh, she was very benevolent to the poor and she would take bread from the castle from the kingdom and give it to those who are in need. Well, one day she was caught doing so and when accosted saying, what do you have? What are you hiding? And she said, it was just a bunch of roses. One problem, it was the middle of winter. Where would she get roses? Well, when she opened up her cape, sure enough, she had snow covered roses. And I went, snow covered roses, let's get a Roselia evolution that is grass and ice. And make it just female because of Elizabeth of Aragon. You know, take that queenly line um, and make this queen grass ice rose Pokemon. I don't see this being a for sure thing. This would be a very niche thing to do. Maybe this may, maybe Elizabeth of Aragon can inspire a grass ice type of itself that's not related to Rosalia. But seeing that we have already a very prominent rose Pokemon, why not give it a, another evolution to make it the grass ice type based off this story. And as for this next new evolution, like I said, I wanted to have two of each and EVs were by themselves in my opinion. So we have Rosalia's new evolution and now for the next one, it's also gonna be a new evolution slash regional variant. And that is where CDOT comes in that I mentioned earlier. CDOT, I would like to see have a regional form based on the home elk. Nope, the home oak tree. Uh, it's just a much larger uh, acorn. Now we obviously CDOT, is an acorn. Am I talking about the right Pokemon? Yes, Seedot is an acorn Pokemon, God bless me. While it's based off the acorn, which comes from an oak tree, and then you say, well, it's, how is it gonna be a regional variant? The home oak is a lot larger acorn, and it can be green instead of brown. I think there's a lot of potential with this. We see how Lotad and Seedot, which are you know, opposites in Ruby and Sapphire, and while I'm not giving Lotad a regional variant, I am giving CDOT a regional variant. I'm not gonna do a second one. We see how uh, Lotad and its evolution absorbed culture to make its final evolution, and we see that also with CDOT, with Shiftry. So if you really want to stick with that pattern, again, this may be a sensitive topic, but you could go the way of the Conquistador. You could. I'm not saying they will, I'm not saying they should, but you could. For the last regional variant though, uh, this is an easy one. Uh, we've talked about the bullfighters, but we're not talking about the bulls. Just give Tauros a regional variant that is the dark type. That's, that's so easy. And for our last set of Pokemon that I wanna look at is our legendaries and our mythicals. I wanna start out with just a legendary trio that uh, I feel like you could really just nail with this. I'm talking about the Spanish Imperial Eagle. It's a beautiful bird. And with the, the idea of Imperial added to it, you can just make three Spanish kings into eagle Pokemon and give them three different types. I arbitrarily just hit steel, rock, and fire to create a different trio, and I meant pure. I'm not talking about steel flying, rock flying, fire flying. Just make them flightless eagles. Make them walk. We've seen weird type combinations or weird mistypings before. Let me mistype these on purpose and just give them these three pure types. They balance each other. Fire is strong against steel, steel is strong against rock, rock is strong against fire. Flying would complicate the mess out of that. So just make these three pure type Pokemon and then make them look like kings. Make them look like royal eagles. Eagles are used in royal imagery a lot. So here you go, three Spanish Imperial Eagle king based Pokemon. Next would be a legendary duo that's not the box art duo, and aka not the prevalent duo because we're gonna get to that next. No, this duo, I just found this was kind of like a Latios and Latias. It was like Manaphy and Fion. Uh, this was going to be based off, again, don't know if I'm pronouncing this correct, Sugar, S-U-G-A-A-R. It's like sugar with an extra A. And Maro, or Mari. Uh, M-A-R-I. One is this uh, serpent or dragon that is the male counterpart of this duet uh, that is based on storms and thunder. So what I saw for this would be this like serpent-esque pure electric type that is a partner to a pure flying type Mari-based Pokemon, which was a woman 
who the serpent was intertwined with, and that was pure flying. And now you say, well, that has a natural strength against the flying type. I know, but because they are a partner, they could have like a Calyrex Shadow Rider or Calyrex Ice Rider situation, and they could be together and be a flying electric type, and that would be a kind of a twist on this duo. I don't know. I think there's some potential there. This cigar is also what I've seen be a possible outcome for Fue Coco. It could be a fire electric type and it'd be based off of this legendary creature or mythical creature. I don't know where Mari would fit into that. Oh goodness, if you did branch evolutions for star type Pokemon, madness would ensue. But if they went this route, that'd be really cool. If you incorporate it here as a legendary, if you put it in the starter type Pokemon, that's cool too. But nonetheless, I would like to see a fire electric non-Rotom based Pokemon, whether it's Fue Coco, whether it's a mythical, uh, or I'm sorry, a legendary, we shall see. Next for the box heart duo, I don't know what to call them, the prominent duo that you would find. I'm talking about Lugia and Ho-Oh, I'm talking about Zacian and Zamazenta, and I'm talking about those two specifically because those were duets. There wasn't a, a third, you know, you say may, Eternatus may fit with Zamazenta and Zacian. Eternatus was clearly something else altogether. Of all of these predictions, this is one that I would, I'd want to stake my claim, and that is for Scarlet, we see the Atzi, A-A-T-X-E. It is, uh, a mythical tale of this shape-shifting creature that takes the form of this red bull. Some even called it a young red bull. That's how it came to be. That would live in a cave and come out to protect individuals from criminals and just the evil of this world, but it would take the form of a red bull. Now with Pokemon Scarlet being here, why not? And again, with the culture of bulls having such a prominent place in the culture, why not have this red bull mythological creature be the legendary Pokemon for Pokemon Scarlet? Now with that though, because it does live in a cave, you would think round rock, maybe something of that nature. And I would say no, and this is why because it would fight the criminal. It was a good creature in this mythology. I would want to see a very fighting type. Now there's a type set that has not been used before, so that's another reason why I would peg this on here. A fairy fighting type for a legendary Pokemon. It just sounds great. It fits the narrative of the mythology that already exists there. It's red by itself. I'm not even forcing it to be red. It was red in the mythology. So I feel like that could easily be the legendary creature, the legendary Pokemon for Pokemon Scarlet. And to counter that would be the Culebra, which was this evil, destructive, horrendous flying dragon of Spanish history uh, that would terrorize people. It was said to be invincible. And while I did just say dragon flying, I would make it dragon dark. Because it was, if it's invincible, why not make it four times a week to Atsi, which is fairy and fighting, because fighting and fairy are both strong against dark, but then fairy being strong against dragon, it just says that this Pokemon completely dominates this Pokemon. If we want to tell this tale of good versus evil, and we've seen that before, a look back at Pokemon X and Y with Xerneas and Yvetel, I'm, or I'm not gonna pronounce it any other way. You had this light creature and this dark creature, this fairy dark, it was a stark contrast. It was a stark dynamic and 1v1, Xerneas is gonna win every time. So why not do the same here? Have this dual type bull and this dual type dragon where the good just beats the bad. That's what Pokemon's narrative is the entire time. You always beat the bad Team Rocket or Team Rocket variant. You always win, good always wins. And now I know we don't live in a world where that happens, but this is fantasy. So not why not have it where good always wins? Have this raging beast of a bull pummel this dragon, stomp it out. And to go with St. George versus the dragon, which is a popular tale from the culture as well, the dragon loses. I think that's an easy win. An easy just home run out of the park. And lastly, the mythical Pokemon of Generation 9. Um, there's there's a lot of things that could have been put here. I mean, we're looking at Celebi, we're looking at Jirachi, we're looking at these smaller uh, fairy-esque type creatures, and spoiler, this would be a fairy type Pokemon. I would make it though a ground fairy, a new type set that's not been used, and because I'm gonna base it off of the Moros, or the Moros, is just again a mythical creature that exists in the tales of Spanish and Iberian culture, and it, it kind of read maybe what could have inspired possibly uh, our little favorite gym goblin already, Sableye. And I almost wanted to make this a regional variant at first, but I needed a mythical creature. So I said, why not make this Moros the mythical Pokemon, make it small, make it quaint, make it cute, and just make it a ground fairy. Create a new type, new mythical, a new Pokemon 
to just seal up this generation. Thank you for watching another one of our predictions videos. I have a lot of fun doing these. There's a lot of work that goes in on my end to get the research done. Nonetheless, we hope to hear your predictions too in the comments down below. Let us know if, once the announcements are made, if we got them right, if we got them wrong, if we just look like complete fools, or if we absolutely nailed it, which I hope to do. I really hope we nailed at least one. That would be satisfying. And what else would be satisfying is until next time, you keeping the imagination alive.